I'm Vaishnavi Anantanaranan, and I'm an assistant professor at the Center for Biosystem Science and Engineering at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. Our lab's research focus is in understanding how structures that make up something called the cytoskeleton give rise to biological phenomena. One of the components of the cytoskeletal filaments are hollow rod-shaped structures called microtubules. Microtubules self-organize inside cells by polymerizing and depolymerizing. Another component of the cell is the organelle that probably everybody knows, the mitochondrion. Mitochondria are also dynamic structures that undergo fission and fusion and are required for energy production inside cells. A balance between mitochondrial fission and fusion is required for optimal mitochondrial function, so much so that in several disease states including cancer, cardiomyopathy and neurodegenerative diseases, mitochondrial dysfunction occurs in conjunction with problems with fission and fusion of the mitochondria. In several eukaryotic cells, Mitochondria and microtubules are very closely associated. In this work, we used a simple model organism, the single-celled eukaryote fission yeast, to understand this association and to identify cellular cues that initiate mitochondrial fission and fusion. By using a combination of genetics, life cell microscopy and analysis, we observe that fission yeast cells that have long microtubules also have long mitochondria and conversely, cells with short microtubules had short mitochondria. In other words, mitochondrial lens mimicked microtubule lens. We discovered that the reason this happens is because mitochondrial fission is prevented when mitochondria are associated with microtubules. And the reason this happens is again linked to the molecular scissor that is required for cutting mitochondria. This molecular scissor cannot cut mitochondria when mitochondria are microtubule bound. Our eureka moment was when we looked at mitochondria in cells that had been genetically modified to produce short and long microtubules. We saw such a stark difference in the way that the mitochondria presented themselves. This is when we knew we had stumbled upon something really cool. This is an interesting finding because like I mentioned a little while ago, mitochondrial form and function are compromised in several disease states. In this study, we have a handle over modifying the form and potentially the function of mitochondria via the microtubules. In future, we will try and understand this link between microtubules and mitochondria in the context of neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So finally, the simple take-home message is that microtubule dynamics regulates mitochondrial fission and that we have a handle over mitochondrial form and function possibly by changing microtubules.